Now, next question is the next question is if we want to test, as we said, that the model is if there is actual endogeneity problem, then only we should use the 2 SLS method. Now, the question is how to test endogeneity. So, to test endogeneity, to test endogeneity, what we have to do? We have to estimate the model. Okay, that means what we will do? If you recall the test of endogeneity y1 equals to beta 0 plus beta 1 y2 plus beta 2 z1 plus u1. So, what we have to do? That means here we are saying y2 equals to pi 0 plus pi 1 z1 plus pi 2 z2, z2 is the instrument plus v1. So, that means we are hype the only channel as we said by which y2 can be correlated with v1 if there is correlation between v1 and e1. So, that means we are saying u1 equals to delta 0 plus delta 1 v1. This is the relationship. So, that means from this reduced form, we will collect the estimated value of the error term and that we will put in the original structural form equation as an additional explanatory variable. Predicted value of the error term from the reduced form equation will be used as an additional explanatory variable in the original structural form equation and if the predicted value of the error term becomes significant, we will say that there is endogeneity. That is what we have discussed. So, we will do that. So, here what we will do? We will first estimate the reduced form equation. Reg education equals to if a father's education. Okay. Education equals to father's education and this is the model and from this what we have to do is to estimate the predicted value of the error term from the reduced form equation. How to do that? So, that means from here we have to use this command predict let us say v comma residual. Predict v comma residual this v will be used in the original equation as an additional explanatory variable. So, reg L O H education and then v. And if we see here v is actually not significant. v is not significant. That means, there is endogeneity in there is no significant endogeneity problem in this particular data. Okay? This is how manually we can test endogeneity. Okay? Manually. Now, how will you test using the Hossmann uh, test uh, command the command is you use the you estimate the model using iv reg iv reg then education l wedge then education equals to others education okay then we have to use this command e stat endogenous sorry e uh, 
uh, we will iv 2 sls command will use l wedge education equals to father's education and then e ah this is the result so instead of iv reg we have to use iv regress to sls command to get this equation now look at here what is the test we are doing this is a test of endogeneity what is the null hypothesis variables are exogenous then stata is reporting to to test statistic for the timing you just keep this darwin score aside just think about this u hasman f test what is the value 2.47 p value is 0.1168 which is not significant which is not significant so that is why the insignificance p value is showing there is no endogeneity okay there is no endogeneity now suppose we have two endogenous variable in the model and we have more than two instruments that is the model we are going to estimate so that means iv regress to sls then l wage let us assume experience is also an endogenous variable let us assume that education and then experience both are endogenous variable and we have father's education mother's education as well as husband's education this is the model this is the model okay now one thing again I would like to mention here when we estimate this model we have two endogenous variable and we have three instruments and in this box data is showing instrumented are education and experience that means these are the two endogenous variable that is why we can easily identify two reduced form equations and these are the instruments but one natural question comes to our mind when we mention these in the bracket education and experience and then there are three instruments which instruments are used for which particular endogenous variable because i am not mentioning anything here i am simply mentioning education and experience as endogenous variable then i am putting three instruments so obviously a natural question will come to our, will come to our mind that out of these three instruments which among these three instruments are used to estimate education hat and which among these three are used for experience okay now to answer this question once again we will go back to our theory which says let us now our model is y1 equals to beta 0 plus beta 1 y 2 plus beta 2 y 3 plus plus let us say uh, e 1 okay and we have two three instrument let us say z 1 which is father's education z2 which is mother's education and z3 which is husband's education okay now what would be the reduced form for y2 y2 would be pi 0 plus pi 1 z1 plus pi 2 
z2 plus pi 3 z3 and what would be the reduced form for y3 gamma 0 plus gamma 1 z1 plus gamma 2 z2 plus gamma 3 z3. If you look at the reduced form equation for both y2 and y3, they are actually same. So, that means all the three instruments are actually appearing in both the reduced form equation because that is the definition of the reduced form equation. What is the definition of reduced form? The endogenous variable is a function of all the exogenous variable included as well as excluded in this model we have not assumed any included exogenous variable that is why it is a function of all the exogenous variables which are actually excluded from the model okay so since the reduced form equations for both y2 and y3 they are same that is why we need not differentiate the reduced form equation of y2 and y3 that is why there is no need to specify anything here in this command that means here i am putting only education and experience to denote they are my endogenous variable after that i am simply putting all the instruments because all the instruments will be used to estimate both the reduced form equation okay now after once we estimate if we put e stat endogenous oh So, this is our model. IV regress to SLS, L wedge, education, experience, then we have three instrument. Okay, we have estimated the model using 2SLS. this is the command yeah so once again we see the u hosman value is 1.53 which is actually not significant look at the p value not significant that means there is no endogeneity okay there is no endogeneity but as we discussed theoretically there is a problem with this test because what the stata is what is this Hossmann test doing if you recall when we have two instruments when we have two instruments so that means from this reduced form equation we will get let us say this is v1 and this is v2 so we will put v1 hat and v2 hat in the original equation so that means our equation would become y1 equals to beta 0 plus beta 1 y 2 plus beta 2 y 3 plus let us say beta 
3 v1 hat plus beta 4 v2 hat plus e1. So, that means we are using the estimated value of the error term as an additional variable. And what we are doing here? We will test this null hypothesis beta sorry beta 3 equals to beta 4 equals to 0 by f test. So, that means we will test the joint significance of beta 3 and beta 4 by f test. And what is the alternative of f test? alternative is at least one among them is significant. So, that means when it is rejected, we can only say that at least one among these two y2 or y3 are endogenous, but we do not know which among these two is actually endogenous. It, is it y2 or y3 or both? That is the problem of this test, the limitation of this test when there is multiple endogenous variable. Okay? Multiple endogenous variable, that is the problem. So, that is why that is why here when I am saying is that endogenous that means when I am putting that Hossmann test we are we can only say that both of them are not that means the null hypothesis is at least one among them are exogenous alternative hypothesis okay in this case it is not rejected so that is fine in case it is rejected, we can say only one among them are endogenous. How to solve this problem? When we have multiple endogenous variable, that means this simple test is not valid. So, we will apply another test and that we will discuss in our next class. Thank you.